not for collective employment agreements. So I support this bill and commend this bill to the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a great pleasure to stand on behalf of New Zealand First to strongly, and I underline that, strongly oppose this bill moving forward through the House, sir. Uh, Hello.com, that's uh, the first thing that jumped to my mind when I read this bill. Um, is this member serious was uh, what came to mind. This is a shameful indictment on the fact that this member over here believes that this is in some way going to benefit New Zealanders. This is not going to benefit New Zealanders. This is going to benefit one group of people, and those are the employers. It's an absolute schmozzle. I don't know where this crap got dreamed up from, sir, but I think it's come out of the multinational um, conglomerate's handbook because it's the only people that are going to make any sense of it and be of any benefit for it, sir. I, think, I see this as being fascism at its absolute best, and I think it's a disgrace that any party that supports it moving forward in this House should be ashamed of themselves because that's exactly what it is. It's a dictatorship. It's dictatorial. Who is this bill going to benefit? I just said it before, sir, it's going to not be a benefit to the workers. It's not going to be a benefit for the executives and the corporates. Government employees are going to have some serious problems, sir. Council staff, executive leadership teams in the TA and the ter ter uh, territorial authorities, they are all going to suffer at the hands of big money, big city business who are going to dictate the terms on contracts when they are sitting down for them. This member talks about the real world, but it doesn't look like he's got any experience in the real world. No. How it normally works is the employer has the weight of control. The balance is in the employment contract. And an employer that is sitting down to discuss the terms of a contract with an employee will simply say to them, if you are successful with your application, how would you feel about removing your ability to put a PG towards the company? Of course, if that person wants the job, they're going to agree to the terms. And it's farcical to think that that person can then go and get independent advice, which they pay for themselves, and which they steer their lawyer into giving them the outcome that they want to make sure that they get their job, to give them the advice that they want to get so they can get that job. The fact that if you are talking about fairness and equity in an employment arrangement, what differential is there with a person that's on a lower earning income and somebody that's on a higher earning income? You've jumped to a conclusion. You have made a huge assumption that just because you're a higher earner that you've got more power or more gumption in your mind to fight your corner. Well, you need to spend some time, I have to say, Mr Simpson, in our select committee when we talked about the zero-hour works contracts, where we had professional, highly qualified, highly skilled people coming in and discussing their problems. They were forced into signing contracts that they couldn't otherwise not sign or fail to get their jobs or lose the opportunity to get their jobs. In fact, I'll give you an example. We had a very intelligent um, woman who was a lawyer who was given a contract to sign a zero-hour work contract. It was a take-it-or-leave-it opportunity that she signed because she was a solo mother, qualified as a lawyer, hard-working intellectual person who got, herself into a, got herself into a situation because the employer demanded it of her. This bill is fascist, sir. We should not be allowing it to move through this House. It's exactly the sort of thing that erodes away the very fibre of our uh, uh, relations, our employment relations that we have built up over years, sir. I think we have some serious concerns. This isn't an indictment on this government, sir. The other part that I'd like to um, bring to the attention is the fact that if an employee gets to a situation where they sign themselves into that contract to make sure that they get that job available to them, the first thing that the employer has the power again to do is enforce the 90-day work trial. Now, all of a sudden, if they want to sign into that contract and have the ability to take a PG against a person for a range of reasons, sexual harassment, sexual preference, whether they're married, whether they've got children, all the sorts of things that um, bad employers would use against an employee, they would have that ability. And if they don't sign that contract, despite them giving them the job, after 90 days, they can just say, sorry, we don't need you anymore. No excuses. Just see you later. But next time, make sure you take away that provision. This is disgraceful. And I absolutely 
um, would stand by the fact that any party that supports us just shows how fascist and out of touch they clearly are, like this government and like this bill has shown here today. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order, order. I'm calling Paul Foster Bell. It's a manafakawa tua rua tēnā koe, tēnā koutou katoa.